going on awesome people hello mr c here super pumped you are continuing our whole number multiplication unit with us we've done several videos already in this unit today going to continue with the fourth grade standard of multiplication gonna dig a little bit deeper into it so let me show you a couple of standards here it is the fourth grade standards, Common Core, Missouri Learning Standards. I'm still in Missouri, so I still got them up here for you. The big thing we're going to be focusing on today is talking about multiplying two digit numbers. All right, we're going to be working on using the two digit multiplication. So dig in with us. A couple things for you before we get started. First things first, subscribe. Click the subscribe button. Join us on this math journey. It's always awesome to see more people that have joined. So please do that. If you didn't get a chance to see the fifth grade videos, I've dropped them in the description down below. Click it, watch them. You can see how we are progressing on to the fifth grade standards. And third grade standard videos will be up soon. Same thing, I'll drop those links in the descriptions so you have access to them because I want you to be able to see how your learning builds upon it and how we can go from third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade for a standard like multiplication. All right, so let's jump into a problem. Here we go. So we're working on two digit by two digit multiplication. And before we even start, Remember, growth mindset, be okay with struggling, be okay with making mistakes, be okay with the challenge that comes with this type of multiplication. The good news is, is that you're gonna see during this how you already know a lot of the strategies for how to solve these types of problems. I'm just gonna build off of things that you already know. So make sure you have the right mindset when we're doing this. Growth mindset's critical. You may not know how to do it, but you just don't know how to do it yet. That's the critical piece. You don't know how to do something yet. So let's get started. First things first, ask yourself, you know, 10 times 80, what does that even mean? What does that look like? How would you even go about solving it? And a lot of times I'll have students draw a picture, which is an awesome strategy. And what will happen is they'll start drawing a picture and they'll see that there's 10 groups. So they'll put 10 groups up here. There's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then what they'll do is see, all right, I have to have 80 in each of these groups. So they start going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And they go all the way to 80 and they do that over and over and over again. And about halfway through it, or like two or three groups into this, they look at me and go, Mr. C, there has got to be an easier way. And I'm like, hmm, I like the way you're thinking. So if you're thinking there's got to be an easier way, Mr. C, there is. So here we go. Let's talk about this. 10 times 80 it means that we could be taking 10 and multiplying that 80 times. So 10 times 80 says, says we're taking 10 and we're multiplying 10 80 times. All right. But here is something that you already know how to do. Okay. Let me show you. Does anybody remember what one times 80 would be? Any ideas what one times 80 would be? You're probably thinking to yourself, well, duh, Mr. C. When you multiply anything by one, you get the same answer. So you get the answer of 80. I couldn't agree more, all right? Multiplying by one gives you the same answer. Now, does anybody know what one times eight is? Yeah, I mean, I, I bet you're screaming it out. You're like, yes, 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 it's eight, it's eight, it's eight, it's eight. You're exactly correct, it is eight, okay? Well, can we use this information to help us solve 10 times 80? How can we use this information to help us solve 10 times 80? All right, let me give you an idea. So in order to solve this, you can remember that one times eight would give you eight. Here's the really cool thing though. 
is if we attach a zero to both of these numbers, that makes them 10 times larger, okay? One, 10 times larger than one is 10. 10 times larger than eight is 80. How many zeros do we have in this problem now? I see one zero here and I see one zero here. Well, anytime you multiply by a number that has, let's say, multiples of 10, you can attach those zeros at the end. The answer for 10 times 80 equals 800. Okay, 10 times 80 equals 800. Let me show you another problem here. Okay, let me show you another problem. Let's say we had 40 times 10. Okay, what do you think you already know about 40 times 10? There's something you already know. There's a couple of multiplication problems that you already know off the top of your head. Maybe you're thinking about this one. Does anybody know what four times one is? Yeah, I mean, y'all probably already know this. Four times one is four. Well, take a look at our problem up here. If we multiply four times one, that gives us four. Now, how many zeros do you see? I see one zero here. I see one zero here. That's two zeros. How many zeros do you think I need to attach to our four? One, two. So our answer for 40 times 10 is 400. You could skip count by tens if you wanted to 40 times. You could go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and keep doing that all the way until you did that 40 times. Or you can use information, your strategies, things that you've learned in previous grades to help you build here. And what I mean by that is you know that four times one equals four. Well, 40 times 10, ignore those zeros until the end and then attach however many you have at the end of your answer because 40 times 10 equals 400. I'm gonna show you what this looks like area model. Okay, let me prove it to you area model. All right, let me erase this here. All right, let me show you what this looks like area model wise. So area model is a strategy that a lot of students love to use and I think it's a great strategy. So let me set it up here and prove to you that 40 times 10 equals 400. So here we go, we've got, I'm gonna use purple. So I've got 40 here and put my small addition sign. There are zero ones, so zero goes there. And then for 10, I've got 110, so that gives me 10. And then I've got zero ones, so the zero is gonna go there. So take a look at this. I took 40 and broke it apart because four tens, that's 40. There's zero ones, there's a zero. And then for 10, I took 110, and there are zero ones, so I put a zero here. So here we go, let's see what I get. So, let me see, sorry about that. 10 times 40, well, one times four is four. Attach the two zeros, that gives me 400. 10 times zero is zero. Zero times 40 is zero. Zero times zero is zero. Well, I'm sure you're kind of looking at this and going, Mr. C, uh, you're just gonna be adding a bunch of zeros. You are exactly correct. Because 400 plus zero plus zero plus zero gives you an answer of 400. So the next time you see a problem and you're multiplying by multiples of 10, you could do this when you're multiplying by multiples of 100, 1,000, 10,000, a million, a billion. Once you know this strategy, once you're able to take a problem and break it apart, just like we did, whenever you're able to take a problem like 37 times, I don't know, let's go with 37 times 10. Well, what's 37 times one? 37 times one equals 37. Well, how many zeros do you have in this problem? You've got one zero. So if you have 37 times 10, you attach that one zero 
and you get an answer of 370. Okay, so just kind of wanted to show you that strategy so you kind of have a better idea of how to attack a problem like this. I think that's really, really important. So if that's a little confusing, pause the video, go back to the beginning, watch it again. This is a strategy you're gonna use all the way up through the rest of your math life because that's just a quick way to multiply, a little strategy there to kind of help you, all right? Let's jump into another problem now, all right? Watch it again if you need to, and then join me for this next one. All right, got a new problem for us here. It's gonna be 25 times 13, and just wanna show you the area model process for solving this type of problem. We've already solved some area model multiplication problems in previous videos, but I wanna show you what it looks like when you have a two-digit times a two-digit problem. Okay, so let me show you how you do this. We're gonna break this number apart just like we were doing before. Let's break apart this 25, okay? How many tens do we have? Well, I see two tens, so that gives us 20. And how many ones do we have? We have five ones. Okay, again, I put my small addition symbol there, helps me keep track of things. Now let's take this 13 and break it apart. So how many tens do we have? We've got one 10. And how many ones do we have? We have three. Okay, so I took 25 and broke it into 20 and five. And I took 13 and broke it into 10 and three. So watch this, this is the same strategy I've used before. Touch the number 10, touch the middle of the area model, say times, touch this number. 10 times 20, 10 times 20. This is just what we talked about. What is one times two? Well, one times two is two. What's, how many zeros do we have? Two zeros, so attach them. Next, do 10 times five. 10 times five is 50. Next, let's do three times 20. Three times 20, another shortcut. Three times two is six. One zero to attach. And lastly, three times five. Three times five is 15. There we go with a 15. All right. Now ask yourself, what are we doing next? All right, if you ask yourself, hmm, what do I do next? Hopefully you're remembering the next step is we need to add up all of the numbers we have to get our final product, okay? Because right now we don't have our final product. So I'm gonna write them from greatest to least, make sure I don't make a mistake because I make mistakes quite a bit. So let's see if I can get this part. All right, so I got 260, 50, 15, Add it all up, slow yourself down, take a deep breath. You've done all the hard work. Now let's make sure you don't make a mistake on the final step. Add the ones, that gives us five. Add the tens, that's 11, 12. There we go. Add the hundreds. And ladies and gentlemen, you should be getting a final answer of 325. Wanted to show you this type of problem. Go back and watch this video again. I'm going to be dropping another video that has more example problems to where we can work on some more together. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the subscribe button to see more from me. That is all I have for you today. Mr. C out.